All right, pre-calc, we are going to start our analytic trig unit. And here's lesson one, day one, fundamental identities and proving trig identities. So first of all, an identity, a mathematical, mathematical sentences that are true for all values of the variable for which both sides of the equation are defined true statements similar to postulates and theorems in geometry um, so they are true for all values of the variable for which both sides of the equation are defined so here are a couple beginner identities that you already know um, first of all cosecant equals one over sine these are the reciprocal identities Let me just highlight that reciprocal you got to memorize these so all right, we have cosecant is equals one over sine. We have sine is one over cosecant. We have secant is one over cosine. Cosine is one over secant. Cotangent is one over tangent. Tangent is one over cotangent. So you should know your reciprocal identities. Next, we have quotient identities. You should also already know these. Tangent is sine over cosine. Um, which is also equal to 1 over cotangent. Cotangent is cosine over sine, which is also equal to 1 over tangent theta. All right, so we already know these identities, but are there others? Since we began our understanding of trig with the unit circle and right triangles, let's return there and look for patterns. So now we're looking at our unit circle here. Um, on our unit circle, if I call this theta 1, all right, here's my 90 degree angle. This is my x value. This is my y value. And since it's a unit circle, my radius is 1. This point here would be x, y. Remember that x is the same as the cosine of theta. And y is the same as the sine of theta. Why is that true? Because on the unit circle, um, here's my theta right here. Uh, so the cosine of theta is um, adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 1, which is x right there. And the sine of theta is y over 1, which is uh, y, which is right there. And so, because of the unit circle, we can relate x and y. If we think about the Pythagorean theorem here, we would say that x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. But we also just decided and showed, showed, is that a word? Showed that x is the same as cosine of theta. So instead of writing x squared, I'm going to write the cosine of theta squared. And I want you to notice how I wrote that. Technically, I should have written cosine of theta squared. But the way we write that is this, cosine squared of theta plus y squared would be the sine of theta squared. So we write that as sine squared theta equals 1. And that is an identity that you need to memorize. It's a very important identity. Come on. I guess I can't highlight my own writing but I'm trying very hard to highlight that, but it's not working. So, okay, next. Um, how are the two acute angles related? So, like I said, let me clean this up a little bit, and get rid of that, boom, 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 all right. If I call this theta, that's our normal reference angle right here, we'll call that theta one, and let's call this angle here theta two. And if you remember from geometry, theta one, plus theta 2 are going to have to equal 90 degrees, or pi over 2. And so when two angles add up to 90, they are complementary. All right. I just want to start this. I wish I could highlight it. You've got to remember that identity right there. That's the Pythagorean identity. Okay. Moving on. Oh, there it is. 
Who made my notes were so thorough? There it is, right there. Look at how funny that is when that highlights. Okay, let's look at the uh, what we can do with that though. We're gonna play with that a little bit. The first thing we're gonna do with that is we are going to divide each term in that by cosine squared. So if I divide each term by cosine squared, what do I have? I have cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta equals one over cosine squared theta. So here, cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta is one plus sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared theta. That is based on our quotient identity above, right up here. Um, tangent is sine over cosine. So therefore, sine squared over cosine is tangent squared. Okay. And then one over cosine squared theta is the same as secant squared theta. And that is another Pythagorean identity. Um, one way to remember that is I tan in a second. Isn't that kind of cute? All right, another one. Let's do this. And this time, instead of dividing by cosine squared, let's divide by sine squared. So that means I have cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta plus sine squared theta. What is that funky little line doing? Go away. All right. Sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta equals 1 divided by sine squared theta. So again, cosine squared over sine squared is also a reciprocal identity, or I'm sorry, a quotient identity, and that would be cotangent squared theta plus sine squared over sine squared is 1 equals 1 over sine squared, which is cosecant squared theta. And one way to remember that, well, before we do that, let's rearrange that and let's write the one first. All right, and a way to remember that is I slept on a cot in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So, I slept on a cot in Colorado Springs, Colorado, cosecant. Isn't that cute? Here is I tan in a second. So there you go. Always fun in math class, isn't it? All right, next. By the way, so make sure you know all these Pythagorean identities. There's three of them. I just can't highlight this one. Wish I could, and I can't highlight that one. So I will star it star it star it there you go okay so we have all these identities so far moving on um, by the way just so you know all three of these pythagorean identities cosine squared and sine squared equals one one plus tangent squared equals secant squared and one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared all of them can be rearranged just remember that they can be rearranged meaning take this you know, the basic one right there. Of course, I can say then that sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. That's what I mean by rearranged, which is kind of obvious. But just keep that in mind as we're doing this. Um, okay, co-function identities, which are called complementary angles. So co-function identities. Here are your cofunction identities. Sine and cosine are cofunctions. Uh, tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. And secant and cosecant. And now you're going to find out why that's true. Let's take this as our right angle. And let's first use this as theta. All right, if that angle's theta, then this angle right here would be pi over 2 minus theta. This angle right here would be 90 minus whatever theta is. All right, but we're going to go with pi over 2. So 
first let's do it in terms of theta. Um, we'll stay, no, I guess the way I have that set up, I have it first in terms of the other. So let's get rid of that little error. Okay, so we're going to do our trig in terms of this angle, pi over 2 minus theta. And in terms of that angle, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. All right, so the sine of pi over 2 minus theta is opposite over hypotenuse. This will be opposite over hypotenuse. But now, if I switch colors here, go to red, and we're going to call this is in turn. Here's my opposite, right? And here's my adjacent. And so my opposite over my adjacent, if I'm doing it in terms of this angle, then I'm looking actually at adjacent over hypotenuse. And so that equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the cosine of theta. All right, so that is called a cofunction identity. The sine of one of the angles is equal to the cosine of the other angle. And you might have already picked up on that as we've gone through these problems. Um, but now you have a name. They are called the cofunction identities. And it works for, you know, sine and cosine go together. So going the other direction, the cosine right here of pi over 2 minus theta, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But now if I switch my perspective, and now I'm looking over here at this angle, adjacent, the blue adjacent over hypotenuse is really the red opposite over hypotenuse. And that's in reference to the sine of theta. Going to tangent. So I'm doing the tangent here of pi over 2 minus theta, the tangent would be opposite over adjacent. But now if I switch perspective and I look at it from the other angle, um, I would have adjacent over opposite. And adjacent over opposite is the cotangent of theta. And we just can continue doing this. The cotangent here would be, of course, adjacent over opposite. But switching my angle, so now I'm here, um, it would be opposite over adjacent, which is the tangent theta. Secant in blue. So I'm right here. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So from this angle right here, hypotenuse over adjacent. Switching the perspective now to this angle, the hypotenuse doesn't change. But instead of adjacent, I'm in opposite. And that, of course, is the cosecant of theta. And finally, if we do the cosecant from this angle here, um, the cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. But then we switch the perspective here. Oops. And we're at this angle right here. Hypotenuse doesn't change, but instead of opposite, we'd call it adjacent. And there we are at secant of theta. 
So we have all of these co-function identities, aka complementary angles, and you need to know them. So you need to know that the sine of pi over 2 minus theta equals the cosine. Oh, I'm trying to highlight and it doesn't work. So we will pull out yellow here. Equals this. The tangent of this of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to this. The secant of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to cosecant of theta. Uh, the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to the sine. The cotangent is equal to the tangent. And the oops, cosecant is equal to the secant of its complementary angle. So these are all complementary angles because I know this angle plus this angle equal 90 degrees. Okay? So there are some more identities. Moving on, now we have odd even identities. A little quick reminder here. I'm sure you've thought a lot about what are odd and even functions. Just in case, though, you have forgotten an even function is when you have a function like this and let's say you take this point here which we'll say is x y and then you get the same point here with negative x y that is an even function it is when f of x is equal to f of negative x that's an even function an odd function is something like this. Uh, so let's look at, um, I don't know, we'll go like, I'm trying to think of how to draw this. We'll just go with this one. Okay, so there's my xy, and this point here would be negative x, negative y. And so for that one, we would say f of x is equal to negative f of x. You bring the negative out. All right. So anyhow, there's your quick reminder. These odd reflect over the origin. These even reflect over the y-axis. OK? So keeping that in mind, you're not going to have to do a lot with that. We just want to see our identities here. All right, so let's look. This is a sine graph. All right, so it's saying, what is the sine of negative theta? So is this an even or an odd function? So let's take this point here. All right, and now if I would reflect that, that ref, uh, reflects across the origin. And so if this is x, y, um, this is negative x, negative y. Therefore, this is an odd function. And so I know the sine of negative theta is the same as the negative sine of theta right here. Oh. And cosecant is 1 over sine, and therefore we would have this also be an odd function. So right here are two odd even identities. This one, which will not let me highlight. Highlight for that. Don't want to highlight it anyhow. Okay, next one. So now we have a cosine function. So take this point here, x, y, and that reflects to here, negative x, y, reflects across the y axis. And so the cosine of negative theta is the same as the cosine of theta. This is an even function. And the same would be true. The secant of negative theta is the same as the secant of theta. So cosine is an even function. And secant, of course, is an even function too. What about tangent? So take this point here, 
it reflects to here. So we have xy here. We have negative xy here. That is an odd function. Therefore, the tangent of negative theta is equal to negative tangent of theta. And cotangent of negative theta is equal to negative cotangent of theta. And so what we have with these odd even identities is we have six more identities right here. All right, moving on. So now, first, you're going to simplify or rewrite trig expressions. So to do that, I need a new color. What color? Let's use pink. Pink makes me happy. OK. Um, the final answer should be simpler than the original expression. So you should be making something simpler, um, not something more complicated. Um, we prefer. It's not, I mean, sometimes it just can't happen, but we prefer one trig function in our answer. So like sine or cosine or tangent, um, one trig function. Just a preference, though. Don't, you know, get hung up on that too much, but try for it. We prefer no fractions. And if you are stuck, try the following strategies. So here are a few strategies as we work on these. Um, strategy one, changing to sines and cosines. So look at problem one here. Um, we have a cotangent, a secant, and a sine. There's so many things going on. I really like this strategy. Just let's get everything to sine and cosine, and let's see what happens. For example, cotangent is cosine over sine. That is from page one the quotient identities secant is one over cosine and then sine is already sine so we used here is a quotient identity here is a reciprocal identity and sine we didn't change at all but now since i'm all in sines and cosines my cosines are going to cancel and my signs are going to cancel, and I have the number 1. Well, that's simp definitely simpler than what we started with, right? So we took care of this right here. The final answer should be simpler than the original expression. All right, another hint is to use Pythagorean and or co-function identities. So the Pythagorean identities here, um, I see in this... Problem number two, I have sine squared theta plus cosine of pi over two minus theta minus one plus cosine squared of theta. Right here, this and this. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Well, that's the Pythagorean identity. What does sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equal? One. So I'm going to write a one. And then I have taken care of those, right? I've simplified them. So then what am I left with? I have 1 ooh, plus the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta minus 1. Well, now I have a 1 and a negative 1. Those make 0, correct? So now I have the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And now that is one of our cofunction identities. Um, and so the, co the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is the same as the sine of theta. And there's my final answer. All right. Next, by factoring the GCF. Okay, so looking at this, in statement 3, I have two terms, term 1, term 2. What do they have in common? Cosine of theta. So I'm going to take out that cosine of theta, and I'm left with 1 minus sine squared theta. And then that looks pretty similar. It should ring a little bell in your head that says the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I could subtract my sine squared and cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. 
So this right here can be replaced with that. So I have cosine theta times the cosine squared of theta. So I have cosine cubed of theta. Cool. Next one, by using even, odd, and reciprocal identities. So first of all, the sine of negative x. It is very important that you have the same input angles. You must have same input angles. All right, so here I have a negative x and here I have an x. I have to get those the same. So what does the sign of negative x equal? Well, going up to our even odd up here, the sign of negative theta is the same as negative sine of theta. So therefore, I'm going to use that even odd identity. And right here, I'm going to say this is the same as negative sine of x times, and then this cosecant, remember rule one or tip one right here was write everything into sines and cosines. So I'm going to take my cosecant and I'm going to rewrite that into 1 over the sine of x. And now I have sine of x here, sine of x down there. They cancel and I get a negative 1. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So having done those, now we're going to start a few proofs. Proving identities. From geometry, a proof is a series of statements facts, definitions, postulates, etc., organized in a logical order by de to deductively reason that a conclusion follows from a given statement. All right, so in trig proofs, we do the same thing using identities, but we organize our proof as a series of algebraic manipulations that are sufficiently obvious enough to require no additional justifications. So, in other words, start with the most complex side of the equation and use identities to write equivalent statements until you get to the other side of the original equation. So, what you're going to do is you're going to choose which side, like look at number five. You're going to look at that and you have two sides to your equation. We have side one, which is the left-hand side. We have side two, which is the right-hand side. I can manipulate either one of those sides. If I manipulate this side, I'm going to manipulate it down using all my different identities, and I want to end up with this. Or I start on the right-hand side, and I manipulate that down until I end up with that. I can go either way, but... The easiest way, of course, is to start with the most complex side because the steps are just a little bit more obvious. So in this situation, I'm going to start on problem six. I'm going to start with the right-hand side. And I want to end up here. This is my goal. I want cotangent squared theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to move, um, and by the way, you have to, you cannot skip any steps, you just got to go step by step by step, okay? Um, so I'm going to move my secant theta up. So I have cosecant theta times cotangent theta times 1 over secant theta is the same as cosine theta. So I did one thing, I moved the secant theta up. All right, next, I'm going to substitute in, I'm going to use the hint one on the previous page, and I'm going to put everything in sines and cosines. So cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. Cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta. And then I have cosine theta. Nothing can cancel. But what I end up with is cosine squared theta on top, 
sine squared theta on the bottom, which is then cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared theta, which is exactly what I had there, cotangent squared theta. And there you go, we're done. All right, number six. This time, the left-hand side definitely looks more complicated. So I'm going to manipulate my left-hand side in order to end up at cosine of x. So first of all, remember, we have to have the same input angle. And here we have a negative x, and here I have a positive x. So I need to take care of that. And the secant of negative x, if you need a little reminder, it's right here. That is an even function. The secant of a negative angle is the same as the secant of the positive angle. So therefore, I can just change that numerator to the secant of x over 1 plus tangent squared, oopsie, tangent squared x equals. All right, next, 1 plus tangent squared x. That looks suspiciously like a Pythagorean identity. So go on in your notes, go back to page one, find your Pythagorean identities, and one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta, one I tan in a second, remember that? So that means I can say secant of x over secant squared of x equals all right, next, well, if I have a secant up there and secant squared down here, I can, sam I can simplify that. So I have 1 over secant of x equals, and what does 1 over secant of x equal? Cosine of x equals cosine of x. Just bring it down. It's right there, and we've done another, pro proven another identity. And there you go. And that's the end of the video.